Alabama Senator Jeff Sessions warns there will be another attempt in Congress on Tuesday to push through TAA and Fast Track Authority. If that happens, it will empower the president to form a Pacific Union encompassing 40% of the world's economy in 12 nations, each with one equal vote. Once the union is formed, foreign bureaucrats will be required to meet regularly to write the commission's rules, regulations, and directives, impacting American jobs, wages, and sovereignty, Session said in a statement posted on his Senate webpage. The Trade Adjustment Assistance, or the TAA, would allegedly protect workers from the consequences of the TPA fast track. House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi and House Speaker John Boehner crafted TAA as a compromise to nudge Democrats who fear a backlash from constituents. TAA, however, would not protect workers as transnational corporations continue to pillage industries and move jobs offshore under TPA and fast track. Sessions writes, Fast Track will not only apply to the Pacific Union, but can expedite an unlimited number of yet unseen international compacts for six years. There are already plans to advance through Fast Track, the Trade-In Services Agreement, the goal of which includes labor mobility among more than 50 nations, further eroding the ability of the American people to control their own affairs. The globalists are using trade deficits and labor mobility to further reduce wages of American workers. TPA would extend and increase the corrosive effect of job losses begun under NAFTA. Between 1979 and 1994, trade eliminated 2.4 million jobs in the U.S., wrote Robert E. Scott, an economist for the Economic Policy Institute, in 1998. Growing trade deficits were responsible for most of these job losses, which were concentrated in manufacturing because most trade involves the sale of manufactured goods. NAFTA added to the flow of jobs out of the U.S. by encouraging firms to move production to Mexico and Canada. Our trade deficit with both countries increased from $16 billion in 1993 to $48 billion in 1996 in constant 1987 dollars. The U.S. lost 395,000 jobs as a result of the NAFTA deficits. Japan and Mexico eventually lost manufacturing to China. In 2013, the overall U.S. trade deficit with China expanded to $315 billion. That big drain tends to slow U.S. economic growth at a time when our government debt is huge and unemployment is high. Establishment economists routinely state globalist free trade is healthy for the economy and creates domestic jobs. Former Assistant Secretary of the Treasury for the Reagan administration, Paul Craig Roberts, wrote, The claim that jobs offshoring by U.S. corporations increases domestic employment in the U.S. is one of the greatest hoaxes ever perpetrated. Over the last decade, the net new jobs created in the U.S. have nothing to do with the multinational corporations. The jobs consist of waitresses and bartenders, healthcare and social services, retail clerks, and while the bubble lasted, construction. These are not the high-tech, high-paying jobs that the new economy promised, and they are not the jobs that can be associated with global corporations. Moreover, these domestic service jobs are themselves scarce, Sessions writes. While elites dream of a world without borders, voters dream of a world where the politicians they elect put this country's own citizens first. The movement among Americans toward a decent, honest populism, toward a refocusing on the needs of American citizens and American interests, grows stronger by the day. Every vote to come before Congress, beginning with the next fast-track push, will face this test. Does your plan strengthen or weaken the social and economic position of the loyal, everyday working American? John Bound for InfoWars.com.